Hi everyone, Janie here. Welcome back. Welcome back to Van Windens and welcome back to Eileen, manager at Van Windens and one of the smartest plant people I know. I know I say that all the time, to you. <laughs> but it's true. You, it's true. So today, what are we talking about, Eileen? It's bare root rose season, you guys. Yay. So it is January and January for, for all, those of us in California, zone nine, yep. zone 10, right, would you say? I would say zone 10 too, yeah. Okay, that is bare root season for us, and it's kind of a big deal, right? Yeah, if you like, um, well, actually so many things, fruit trees, edibles, roses, January is the month to get things in the ground and planted. Yeah. Um, bare root can be intimidating. Right. People don't really know what they're doing, so we're hoping with this video we're going to help you out with that. Yes. But this uh, this month is the month to do roses if you're into roses. Yeah. And that's kind of why I always say January it kind of starts off our gardening season, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. it's, it's purely because of the bare roots and making sure you get those in the ground because it's worth it, right? Yeah, totally. All right. So let's get started. So Eileen, let's talk a little bit about why bare roots are a big deal for us. Why do we? Why would we want a bare root rose versus a beautiful rose that's already blooming? Yes. You know that we see in the garden centers a little later on in the season. So in general, the younger you get things planted, the more successful the plant is going to be. So you can plant something in like the month of May, covered mm -hmm. in flowers and gorgeous, mm -hmm. but it might not be just as successful as something that you start really young. Okay. The other benefit of bare root is you're gonna find the largest selection, the cheapest prices. Mm -hmm. Like right now, our roses are 20% off. It's our bare root price. I'm buying some today. But. Yeah. <laughs> and you can kind of see like under the hood, like, you know, uh -huh. when you're buying a car, you lift the hood and see what's yeah. going on. Yeah. You're kind of seeing like what you're working with. You're seeing you want everything. Big fat canes. You want a certain shape to the canes. You want a big root system. Okay. When you're buying in May, you don't really get a sense of that nearly as much. Because really all you're looking at is the foliage and the flowers. Yeah. You get totally like totally distracted, distracted by the flowers. Yeah. But it's, it is hard because I come into garden centers and I see these sticks I know. and it's like why 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 would I even bother with it's, these it's, if it's your first time it's hard to walk up to this with confidence and be like yes I will take that one <laughs> right right so would you say bare roots they're they're across the board better than buying regular plants for almost everyone like if you are really not um, confident in your growing abilities it's easier to start with a full-grown plant that's okay. totally rooted in okay um, but if you want the best results and you're willing to learn or maybe you already know bare root is the way to go okay so maybe you can tell us a little bit about picking the right bare root I would love to okay Eileen so what am I looking for if I come up and I see a bunch of sticks in a pot what am I looking for all right so the way you pick out a good bare root rose is first you're going to walk up and see how the canes are looking okay you can see this one has three canes that are all kind of in a vase shape okay that is really ideal okay this one here again has kind of an open center vase shape okay. that is really ideal so why are we looking for open centers because as these grow yeah you really want airflow okay airflow is going to keep your diseases down all right it's also going to create a, like a pleasing shape to look at Okay, so starting with a good vase shape means that you're gonna have a healthier plant simply because of the airflow. That's it for success. Okay, and bare roots, you can actually see that it's a vase shape like this one. So this one's looking pretty good too. This one looks pretty good. If I were to take this rose home, I might even cut out these two canes. Oh, interesting. Really, like you don't want a bunch of canes in the beginning because it's just gonna cause problems. Interesting. See, I would always think this the opposite. You know, I would look at that and I'd be like, oh, that looks like a big plant. So that one is a little bit different. Okay. So you notice on this one, it's grafted. Okay. It has this graft union. It's actually a bud union where this is the rootstock. And then these are the actual just Joey variety that's been grafted on. Okay. This one over here, this is a peach drift. It's grown on own root. Oh, got it. So that's why it looks different. There yeah. are pros and cons to own root versus grafted. Um, but peach drift is one that really benefits from being on its own root. Interesting. Okay. So is there... Um like, are there certain roses that you would automatically know you wanted a grafted one versus an own root one? Um, a lot of the hybrid teas, which is a category of rose that has extra long stems and it's most um, 
commonly used for like cutting roses. Those okay. are great grafted. Okay. Um, it really helps them with their form and their shape and their disease resistance and everything else. Okay. So can we quickly go over the different types of roses? Sure. Yeah. So we've got the hybrid teas. Hybrid tea is what most people think of when they think of like the classic rose shape. It's got right. a high center, it's called. Okay. Um, we also have, you know, uh, Floribunda roses. Okay. Floribunda to me just makes perfect sense because it's just like a kapow of color. Okay. So many roses and it's going to be more of like a bushy shape rather than an upright shape like the hybrid tea. Got it. Um, we also have some grandifloras, which those are so different in so many ways it's hard to put them all in one tidy package for you guys right now. But right. Um, that's some of the older varieties. Okay. Um, something that's becoming more and more popular, um, I think, would be the shrub rose. Shrub roses are going to be on their own root almost always. They're going to grow like kind of a big bush. Uh -huh. But they often have characteristics like they're self-cleaning, oh. which is nice. And that's a little bit of a misnomer because it's not like they're tidy. Right. But they don't have to be deadheaded to create more flowers. Right. So if you had like a big hillside or someplace off in the distance that you just wanted a bunch of color, plant a shrub rose because okay. it's going to keep pumping out flowers without the maintenance that other roses require. Okay. So if kind of a rose that you wanted to be hands off, it would be kind yeah. of a shrub rose. Yeah, a little, little less maintenance, a little more hands off. Okay. Um, and then we have a little bit more hands on, which would be your climbing roses, which wow, are those beautiful in your garden. They're incredible. But there's going to be a little bit more work to have that beauty. Right. Because you kind of have to train it up and all that kind of stuff. You got to train it. You got to prune it. You got to deadhead it. Mm -hmm. What about, um, I'm kind of getting into ground cover roses. Yes. What about those? How are it like? So ground cover roses are often in the shrub category. Those can be fabulous. Peach drift. Um, would be considered a ground cover rose. And okay. the Drift series is actually really nice because they're only a foot and a half, two feet tall. Yeah. So you can really sneak them in places. Yeah. I just think that's so pretty to like under plant with oh, a rose. My goodness. Stunning. Yeah. Especially in a real sunny spot. Beautiful. Um, and then carpet roses are really popular. Oh, okay. Those are considered a ground cover rose, but I do see those get taller and taller. A little bit bigger. Lower, than so. Yeah. And then you guys have a lot of patio tree roses, right? Oh my gosh, we have a ton of patio so tree roses. So many, yeah. So that is a rose that's grafted on a trunk that's either 24 or 36 inches tall. Okay. And it's going to be basically any of these varieties grafted up like that. Okay, beautiful. Very kind of formal looking and... and yeah, it can definitely be tied into a formal landscape. It can be... Um, popped up behind like a boxwood hedge. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. I love it. It's gorgeous. So all different types. Van Windens, you guys have all these different types? Yeah. If you go to vanwindens.com uh -huh. slash roses, go mm -hmm. to our website. We have all the pictures of our roses. Mm -hmm. And then we also post lots of pictures of our roses this time of year on our Instagram channel. We're okay. at Van Windens. Yes. Which is y your channel. You mainly... <laughs> I'm the person behind the channel. And you're so, I mean, literally every day I learn something new on okay. the Van Windens channel. So follow her on Instagram. Follow Van Windens on Instagram. Um, how many, like, like you guys get, a, it's, every time I come here in the spring, it seems like there's yeah. a lot of roses here. We how do many? roses really well. One of the Van Winden sisters is our rose buyer, Anne, and uh -huh. she knows what she's doing. We get like close to 200 different varieties. <laughs> oh yeah. Goodness. So right now, um, you know, beginning of January, we have an amazing selection. I will say, though, that some of the varieties we only get five of. Oh, my goodness. So if you're doing a mass planting, get your special requests in early. So that's something I really want to point out, not just for Van Windens, but for most independent garden centers. If there's something specific that you want, mm -hmm. call in. Yes. And then someone like Eileen mm -hmm. will pick out the best ones. The best one. The be <laughs> which I already called in and <laughs> reserved a couple of the ones I wanted. So that's great. So when you pick out the best ones, you're looking at, like we were talking about, the vase shape. Mm -hmm. What about like this? This cane looks huge, mm -hmm. right? Versus like this cane over here. Is it because they're a different type of rose or? Yeah, totally. So this is going to be your classic hybrid tea. Okay. Called fragrant plum. This is sea foam. This is considered a shrub rose. Okay. So this is its own root again. Yeah, this is on own root and this is going to grow much bushier. Okay. This is going to be very upright, more formal. Okay. Now I know a little bit, a very little bit about grading bare root roses. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Okay. Yes. Yeah. So at Van Windens, we strive to have grade one roses. Okay. Grade one roses are super healthy. They have thick canes. They have at least, we always aim for three thick canes. Okay. 
and they have a very robust root system. So this is gonna really set you up for success. Grade one's the best. Grade one is the best. Okay. Grade one and a half, pretty good. Grade two, woo! Stay you away from that. You are gonna have a hard time growing that rose. Okay, so, so set yourself up for success. Get the best you can get, and the best way to do that is to go to a reputable center that only buys grade ones, as opposed to maybe going to a grocery if store. If you ever see a rose being sold in like a plastic bag, that is a big red flag. Okay, most um, likely that's a grade two. Yeah. Do people ever sell not even graded? Like, um, I suppose someone somewhere is doing that. Okay. I don't even know about it. Okay, <laughs> let's not talk about it. <laughs> let's not talk about it. So I know behind you, you have an example of... Yeah, check out this bare root rose. So what we do here is we call these bare root in can to make uh -huh. it easier for you. But these are totally dormant and asleep. They're okay. considered bare root. We're selling them at the bare root price. So you guys pop them up here? We pot them up actually at our growing grounds. Okay, all right. Yeah. Which is in Which Napa. Which is in Napa on yeah. Big Ranch Road. Okay. <laughs> I want to go there one day. But I want to show you what you're getting when you get a bare root oh, rose wow. from us. So this is a grade one rose. Okay. This is an iceberg. This oh, is wow. a budded iceberg. Sometimes iceberg is sold on own root. Oh, okay. But um, this is grafted. This is by far the most popular variety of rose sold yes. in the Napa Valley. Yes, um, because they do so well. They do well here. Everyone loves, you know, white roses in this valley. Yeah. And these are incredibly disease resistant, resistant with the exception of powdery mildew. Okay. Which is manageable. Okay. All right. Um, but check out the roots Beautiful. on this thing. Beautiful. It's gorgeous. It is gorgeous. So we're looking for lots of roots, lots of healthy looking roots. Mm -hmm. Man, that is... This barely, you know, this barely fits yeah. in the five gallon container we put it in. So once I put that in the ground, I'm saying I like I'm going to take that home because it's on my wish list. <laughs> once I take that home and I put it in the ground, once it heats up a little bit, it's going to start growing so fast. Yeah, once the hot weather hits and the ground warms, this will start growing. Um, you can see on a couple of these actually, so right here, there's a little pink bud. And that is where the new growth's going to come out of. Oh, neat. So that is where the leaf or the stem is going to come out. And yeah. then the flower is going to develop off of that stem right there. Exactly. So even in January, it's starting. <laughs> so most of our roses look amazing like this, but I have a story for you. Oh, you do? So, yeah. Love so it. I was out at the ranch canning roses a couple years ago. Okay. And we opened up a box expecting to find roses that looked like this. And instead we found a bunch of roses that were wrapped in tiny little plastic bags. Oh, and we no. were just like, what in the just world Just like you were this? saying. Yeah. And we start opening them up. And sure enough, it was a big, beautiful rose up here and this really sad little vase. Oh I have some pictures I'll show you. Okay, show you. all right, I'll put them up it, right we're now. We're all like, the whole staff was just like, what the heck? Oh because no. you see these roses being sold around at you know, big box stores or whatever, right. and it looks pretty good. Right. You don't realize that like, this is what you want. That's the, the important roots thing. This is what you want. Like you could, if you wanted to be mean, you could cut this rose right here and still have a pretty darn good rose because you've got these roots. Because that's the that's what you're spending the money on is yeah, the roots. Yeah, it's all about the roots. So if you find a rose that's a incredible sale, mm -hmm. right? You might want to take a quick look at the roots. Investigate under the hood. Okay. <laughs> Good tip. Good tip. So what did you guys do when you had all of those? Uh, we ended up sending them back. They were supposed to go to some other nursery somewhere. Um, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't for us. So again, you guys sell only grade ones. Grade ones. Right. I shouldn't say only grade ones because some of these, like some of the shrub roses. Like that's not a grade one that has a different grading system. Totally. But we yeah. go for the best. Yeah. So the rose grading system is kind of, I mean, it's not hard and fast rules, it's basically. It's great for classic things like hybrid teas, but mm -hmm. some of the shrub roses or, you know, just not the classic roses, mm -hmm. the same rules don't really fit. Okay. Got it. Um, so I would say come to a garden center, a reputable garden center, and ask the staff and say, what grade roses you know mm -hmm. do you sell and if they automatically say oh i know exactly what you're talking about that's probably a good sign yeah. <laughs> if they don't know what you're talking about i would probably go to another garden <laughs> center <laughs> so tell me a little bit about the varieties that you have i know van winden's i actually looked on the website at all the stuff the varieties that you have it's crazy it's how very many you fun have. to sit on the couch and just scroll through it's, that. yeah, yeah it's <laughs> like dreaming right in the middle of winter so yeah t i mean that look at this one right here this one might be coming home with that me. That one's new this year. Oh my goodness, that so might be coming home. this style rose mm -hmm. is called quartered. 
Can you okay. see just how many petals that has? I do. It's beautiful. That's one of my favorites. So romantic, kind of old fashioned. Okay. I love it. It's gorgeous. Really pretty. And then I recognize this one. I've definitely seen that one before. Yeah, so this one's great. I love a fragrant rose. Mm -hmm. I have to say, fragrant roses aren't as common as they used to be way, way, way back in the day because mm -hmm. it's hard to get a rose that is fragrant and disease resistant right. and easy to grow right. and keeps blooming and blooming. It's like hard to have it all. Right. A lot yeah. of people sacrifice scent in, a, in exchange for disease resistance. Right, yeah. Fragrant plum is pretty much the whole package deal though. Okay, well that's good to hear. So, and then this is another example of... Sea foam is great. This is a shrub rose. This one brags because it can uh, smother out weeds. <gasps> no. How fun is that? Are you serious? <laughs> Man, every time I come here, I spend so much money. Because, <laughs> yeah, I need that for sure. Absolutely. All right, okay. over here we have white needland. Mm. This is also going to be a shrub rose. Oh, it's beautiful. This one is really special because it's incredibly disease resistant. Oh, neat. Yes. So even with powdery mildew? Yeah, so if you have an area with high humidity um, for some reason, like on the coast, this might be a good option. Okay, all right. And then here's that peach drift you were talking about. I love the drift series. So I don't know a smaller rose that's easy to find. The drift series can be white, yellow, peach. I want to say there's an apricot drift too. Okay. Um, you can just sneak them at the very front of beds. Oh my gosh, I want and that. They're so delicate and fun. And then what's this one over here? So this is Orange Glow Knockout. Okay. The Knockout series is really nice. They are one of those self cleaning roses I told oh, you about. Yeah. So they'll just keep pumping out flowers without the deadheading. So with knockout roses, I've heard that they've definitely been affected by the rose rosette disease. Now, do we have to worry about that here in California? In California, we have not seen it yet. Hopefully okay. we never do. Hopefully never. Um, I've never seen it with my own, own eyes. Right, and so. you know everything. Well. But, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's the type of thing, rose rosette disease, it's pretty pre prevalent on the East Coast, it right? It's terrible. Right. Um, and I just, I really hope it doesn't keep coming to California. I know, I know. There's a lot of diseases that, you know, it's not here yet, but we kind of got to keep our eyes out. So that's something that we all should know. If you live in California, rose rosette disease is pretty non-existent out here. So um, just, just kind of something to think about. Um, great. Well, these are absolutely beautiful. Eileen, tell me what your favorite Roses are. Oh like, golly. You probably have ten different favorites, but I'm a sucker for climber climbing too. roses. Me too. I love them. Um, I have a Joseph's coat at my house you do? in a big pot and I love it because I have a blue house and Joseph's coat blooms flowers red, yellow, orange. It's gorgeous. And it's like it's the most beautiful. So much fun. And it's such a good name for mm -hmm. that rose, it right? Is, yeah. So Eileen, tell me a little bit about planting because I'm taking some bare roots home today. What are some things I should be thinking about when I'm when I'm actually getting them in the ground? Okay, so in Napa we deal with what we call the Napa clay. Mm -hmm. You're definitely going to want uh, want to add some organic material. Okay. Um, if you buy a bare root rose from Van Windens, we send you home with a bunch of soil. Okay. You want to mix that in the hole about 50-50. All right. If you buy um, a bare root rose, you don't get the soil, then this would be a great option. This is EB Stone rose and flower. Okay. Any sort of planting mix is going to work pretty well. Make sure you don't use a potting soil in the ground. Oh, really? Planting mix would be the best. Planting mix. So basically you're going to dig the hole mm -hmm. and then amend it with 50% of a planting mix, specifically a rose planting mix if you have it. And then definitely mix in some starter fertilizer. Okay. What does that do? This is going to make sure the rose has everything it needs to get going. Okay. All right. And kind of get the roots started growing and all that fun yes. stuff. Yes. And Great. then the last thing, Gophers love roses. Mm. So if you have a gopher problem, mm -hmm. you might add a gopher basket. Okay. Um, these can be a little bit tricky to use, especially with a bare root rose. You don't want to have any air pockets around the roots. Oh, yeah. If you do have air pockets, especially close to the surface, yeah. you might actually get suckers growing up from the roots. Oh, no. That's pretty unideal when you come to a rose that's been grafted because that rootstock is not what you're going it's for. It's going to be a completely different rose. Yep. Yeah. Interesting. Um, okay. I have, not to make this about me, but I have ground squirrels. Ah. Do they, do you know if they have, go for the roots like um, this? They might bury things by the roots. And mess it up a little bit. by the roots. Yeah. Um, which would annoy the rose, but probably not kill the rose. Okay. Gophers will like, 
actually take it down. Destroyed her <laughs> My mom up in Reading, she deals with gophers, and uh, she says they take the whole plant and yeah. just pull it down. It's wild if you actually see it. Oh like you're my like, goodness. Why is that plant moving and it just disappears underground? <laughs> what just happened? Yeah. <laughs> All right, and then so we're in the middle of January. We're still getting a lot of rain. Mm -hmm. Do do we start? When do we start irrigating our roses? So roses like to have an evenly moist root zone. Okay. They are not a drought tolerant rose. Okay. Um, so it depends on the weather we're getting. If it starts to get really dry, yes, you're gonna need to add some moisture. In theory, in Napa, we don't usually have to start watering roses until like mid-March. Okay. But it really just depends on the weather. Got to kind of keep an eye on it. And then uh, last, was it last year or the year before, I tried the Van Winden Secret Mix. Ah, yes. It was incredible. Oh, I, like that. I yeah. mean, I I will always credit you guys with teaching uh, teaching mm -hmm. me that. It is incredible. Can you tell us a little bit about the secret mix? Yeah, so we had a manager here who we loved, Gary, for decades. He's actually still around one day a week. Anyways, he came up with this mix. It's two tablespoons E.B. Stone Soul Po Mag. Okay. It's going to be a uh, cup of alfalfa meal. Okay. And it's going to be a handful, handful of whatever organic fertilizer all purpose that you like to use right we used to always say one specific fertilizer but in the last two years the price like quadrupled on okay. it okay yeah so just a rose fertilizer just a nice rose fertilizer. yeah That's i organic. think i used eb stone rose food that when i did great. it yeah i did a half a cup of eb stone rose food um one cup of well, alfalfa meal mm -hmm. and then two tablespoons of the solpo mag from eb stone yeah and it was it, I mean, I it was you can get in, great results. Holy cow. Yeah. So when do we put the, the Van Winden Magic Mix on it? So that's going to be when there's about two to three inches of new growth off of your canes. Off of these guys. Yeah. So when these buds that we were talking about start to swell up mm -hmm. and they'll push out new growth. So when it's about that big, that's mm -hmm. when it's time to start fertilizing. Okay. So then you sprinkle the magic mix around and then they're, they're going to love it. Yep. And then after that, pretty much what, like once a month, once every six weeks. So as far as the Van Winden's mix, you can do that, I think about two times during the season and have really great results. Okay. You don't have to do the magic mix every month, anything like that. Okay. Um, as far as how often you fertilize, it really depends on um, the soil you're starting with. It depends on the fertilizer you're using. So it, I can't say anything very specific. Okay. But that magic mix is amazing. Yeah. I'm always, like I said, I'm always going to credit you guys with that because I <laughs> could not believe it. I had a... Um, like a one and a half year, like a second year Eden climbing rose. And I put that mix on and it just, people were like, how did you get it to grow so fast? <laughs> and I, I really think it's because of that magic yeah. mix. So I will put that in the description down below, the little recipe, and but you all will hear me talk about it a lot, a lot. So Eileen, thank you again so much. You're so fantastic. I learned so much when I come here. I know everybody learns so much when we come here. So I really, really appreciate it. You're so welcome. Come back anytime. Thank you so much. Okay, everyone. So that is going to be it. Thank you again so much. I love coming here. I am going shopping and I am buying a whole bunch of bare roots and then I'm planning to plant them a little bit later this week. So stay tuned. So I hope you all enjoyed this and I hope you all have a chance to get in your garden today.